We got new Halloween Ends footage and a new look at the mask. How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne, and if you like monsters, slashers, pretty much any movie shot during, set during, or inspired by the 1980s, this is the channel for you. So in today's video, we've got so much awesome Halloween news to cover, starting out with the new TV spot that leaked this morning. Uh, it leaked in a different language. I'm not sure what language it was. It was really low quality though. And then of course, during the football game tonight, the English version of it played, and it is really good. It's keeping with the trend of not spoiling huge moments from the movie that we started with the last trailer. I love this new form of marketing where they show us Michael Myers and a bunch of characters who are going to encounter him throughout the movie and they don't give us any hints as to who they are. And there's only one death spoiled in this trailer and it doesn't look like it's of a main character and I don't think it's Michael Myers committing this murder. It's of course a replication of the kill where he holds you up and then stabs you into the wall and leaves you hanging there. But the next shot after that happens, we get a good look at the mask and this looks like a store bought Halloween mask, like a store bought Michael Myers mask. The thing that's really standing out to me is that there's like a part in the lips that I don't think is there in Halloween Kills or Halloween 2018. In fact, I'm like 99% certain that's not there in Kills or 2018. So yeah, from that and just the eye holes having like dark black makeup it looks like around the actual eye of the person wearing it, it just doesn't look like Michael Myers to me. So I'm sticking with the whole Christine theory where Corey Cunningham is a worshiper of Michael Myers and he's recreating one of his kills because everyone would know about this kill if they worshipped him like a serial killer. It would be out there that he stabbed a guy into a cabinet and had him hang there from the knife, which would take an incredible amount of force. Like, it's kind of impressive on Michael Myers' part. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But yeah, I was just so excited to talk about that part in the trailer because I was like, oh man, it's another shot where it doesn't totally look like Michael Myers. But then, in the rest of the trailer, it looks like all we're seeing is the real Michael Myers and we never see him kill anyone. I also noticed that there's a lot of people running away and screaming screaming, which is good. There's more people encountering Michael Myers. I love that. There's a cool shot where there's a bunch of flashlights being pointed at something and who looks like Sheriff Frank Hawkins turning oh, like where the flashlights are aiming. And what I'm assuming is that's the murder that we heard about in the description of the first trailer that really kicks things off in this movie. It's like, oh shoot, it's Halloween night or it's leading up to Halloween night. There's a new murder in Haddonfield. Everyone's going to be stressed. Obviously people want to believe it's not Michael Myers. So that's probably why they're going to end up blaming. Corey Cunningham for the murder. That makes sense to me because, you know, Michael Myers, they beat him with an iron and a bunch of other stuff four years ago and he was able to get away. So they probably think he'd be too hard to kill if he came back. So they're looking for anyone else they can blame for that murder. I'm sure there's going to be a group of people led by Lori, Allison, and Hawkins who are going to know otherwise and be on the hunt for Michael Myers. There's also just such an awesome, awesome shot of who I think is Corey Cunningham running down underneath a bridge into a quarry. It's covered in fog. It's so beautiful looking. It feels like fall and it reminds me of that amazing shot in Halloween 2018's first trailer where the bus is crashed and the fog is all there on the side of the road. That is like such a memorable shot to me just from the trailer and the actual movie. I also want to point out that I think it's really cool how much footage it used from the trailer we already got. We got the shot of the house where it's like the POV shot going into the house. We also got that shot of kids running around on Halloween night. We do have a new shot of Lori with glasses on and a different outfit than the one we've already seen her in. I just love so much that I don't know what's going to happen in this movie and it's only five weeks away. So if you haven't seen this TV spot, I'm going to deem it totally safe to watch if you're worried about spoilers. And if you've seen the other trailer, it's definitely less spoilery in my opinion than that trailer. So if that one didn't bug you, I think you're going to be fine here. And also undercutting this thing with the kids saying he's going to get you from Halloween one. That's just so much nostalgia right there. I don't want to say it's good because it feels so out of pocket universal, but I got to praise you for that. That is a really well cut trailer with some really cool audio underneath it. I love that since this is officially like the last Lori Strode Halloween, it's ending her saga. They're calling back so much on the marketing to 1978 Halloween. And that is something that I think Universal deserves to be praised for. And that's funny. I was able to get a video out in the first trailer because everyone was at a screening of Nope. And now I'm able to get a video out on the second trailer because everyone's at Halloween Horror Nights. The second news story I have for you guys today is of course around the mask and Halloween ends because it leaked 
And then it was announced, like five minutes later. The mask that Trick or Treat Studios is producing has been revealed, and this is important because it's the mask I've been telling you guys about, where it's the Halloween Kills mask with all of the damage that happened there, but just a little bit more damage to it and mold down one side of the mask. It's pretty much exactly how I described it, so if you've been watching my channel for a little bit, you know that's what you should have been expecting. But of course, there are a lot of rumors out there and people telling me I was wrong and that we were going to see a hobo Michael Myers in this movie. Obviously, that's 100% untrue and now you can finally tell me I was right down in the comments. Like, look guys, I know it's not good to gloat, I know, but I very rarely take credit for anything on this channel and I'm taking credit today for holding strong and saying no, that is not what Michael Myers is going to look like and some of the masks we're seeing in that first trailer don't line up. Now you've seen the mask that I was talking about that was throwing me off and it looks really good. Of course, it's Trick or Treat Studios. This is a promo shot every single time we go through this where the promo shot looks amazing and the mask we get at the store has potential to look nearly as good, but nine times out of 10 does not look nearly as good as the mask we see in the promo shot. But what I will say is that these are mass produced masks. They're being sold at a pretty cheap price and it all comes down to the paint. So if you're willing to put in a little bit of elbow grease, I highly recommend buying some of the latex paint that Justin Mabry makes. It's like the best you can do. You can basically make this mask Mask look like the movie one and it's not really that hard. The mask I wore out on Halloween last year, the Kills mask, is just a Trick or Treat Studios mask that I bought at Party City. I took home, I mixed some liquid latex with white paint and yellow paint to give it that egg look on one side and then more white paint for the other side of the mask and I sat there all night just hand painting it and then I just applied a black wash to it at the end and it came out looking so good, I think personally. It looked not as good obviously as the movie one. I wasn't expecting it to, but it looked so much better than the one that I got at the store. Like if I wore that out, I would have been embarrassed. I would have just stuck with my really good Halloween 2018 mask that I got from Simon Brandolino. But it felt really cool wearing out a mask that I painted myself. So you've still got, uh, what, like six or seven weeks until Halloween. I think that's more than enough time to at least try to attempt painting one of these masks. And you don't have to wait all that long to actually get it because Trick or Treat Studios announced that this is going on sale on September 15th. Now, because last year, Halloween Kills, it had already been delayed, they had a ton of these masks out really early and everyone was able to get them. I think this is going to be more of a Halloween 2018 situation where these masks are going to sell out online and be extremely hard to get leading up to Halloween. So what I'm gonna do is stay up till midnight on the 14th and try my best to get it as soon as I possibly can. And I really hope I'm crossing my fingers that this doesn't go up for sale while I'm asleep because I really want one of these masks. And yeah, I honestly think Trick or Treat Studios catches more shit than they deserve, especially what I've seen what good rehaulers can do with these Trick or Treat Studios masks, and of course, what I can do with my own mask. I think they're really good quality masks, you've just gotta paint them yourself. But I have noticed uh, out at Spirit Halloween this year, some Halloween 2018 masks that are looking a little rough. They're gray instead of being like a faded white, and the like darkness they put inside the actual cracks and age marks on the mask is way too dark. But I also went to Halloween Superstore and there I saw one of the best kills masks like stock I've ever seen in my life. So if you want to make sure you get a good pull, you're just going to have to go to Spirit Halloween when they open and make sure you dig through all the masks to find the best one you possibly can. Uh, Spirit restocks pretty much every day. So the best thing you can do is again, just get there when they open. Or if you just want to roll the dice like I am knowing I'm going to repaint it myself, uh, I'm going to order it from Trick or Treat Studios on September 15th. But overall, yeah, this is the mask I've been talking about for months here on the channel. So now you can feel good knowing that you knew about this mask before anyone else. And if you're new here, help me out by subscribing and setting your notifications to all. And real quick before I get to the third update, I gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, my friend Evan Gorski and his short film, Paralean. Paralean is a folk horror short that follows a vengeful man on his hunt for a creature that's claimed his daughter's life. It's an exploration of loss and a window into overcoming the scariest monster of all, ourselves. But basically it's a badass horror short with a fucking awesome monster. I've seen some of the mock-ups of the monster they're making and it is genuinely cool. I think a lot of people who watch this channel are going to be into it and that's just me talking as me, not as someone who's sponsored by my friend. <laughs> right now they're crowdfunding it on Seed and Spark. They're about halfway to their goal and they have five days left. They gotta hit $13,000 and I've seen his other short, Witch Hunt. You can watch it on the Alter channel. It is so good. This guy knows what he's doing. I'm not just saying that because he's my friend. I highly recommend 
recommend you check out Evan's intro video for Paralean because I don't know, I think he sells it much better than I ever could. The third news story I have for you guys today is more of a recommendation. I've recommended this place on the channel before, which you might've heard, but you need to check out Sugar Mint Gallery's new event, Welcome to Head in Field 8. It's a new gallery exhibit where a bunch of people submitted a ton of great Halloween movie art. And it's not just Halloween Kills or Halloween 1978. I saw stuff from Halloween 4. I saw stuff from Halloween 2018. I saw stuff from Halloween 3. They cover everything with this art from so many different artists. And of course there's prints you can buy. I bought one that's really cool. It's of uh, the Myers house on a fall night. It takes a little bit of creative liberties, but there's a bunch of jack-o'-lanterns around it. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. It was only 30 bucks too. And one other art piece I saw that I loved is from Joe Risotto. He made driver's licenses for Michael Myers since, you know, Michael Myers suddenly knows how to drive in 1978 and it's become his trademark move over a lot of the movies. So I thought that was a really clever joke. But the coolest thing, the absolute coolest thing is the first thing you see when you walk in there. So I went to their opening reception, which was great. I really appreciate the fact that they invited me to this. I got to meet so many of you there, which was the best part. Honestly, I'm just going to be real. But talking about the actual stuff on display, the coolest thing is I walk in, the first person I see is Christopher Nelson, and I was so excited to get to talk to him again. And then I look over and there's a Halloween Kills Michael Myers there, which I immediately knew was probably a screen use costume. So I asked, and it was because he actually brought one for Halloween 2018 and had it there for a long time. And now he has a Halloween Kills one and God damn, does it look cool. The jumpsuit, the mask, everything about it, the knife, the hands there. It looks like Michael Myers is staring you down, ready to stab you with a knife. And it is legitimately kind of freaky because the head sculpt underneath the mask, like the mannequin head, is a sculpt of James Drew Courtney's head and they even have the dead eye effect on it. So while yeah, there is a ton of amazing art in here that people created, if you wanna see something genuinely cool from a real Halloween movie, you need to go check out Welcome to Head and Field 8 at Sugarman Gallery. You will not be disappointed. And yeah, this was such a cool event to be at for the opening night. There was like hundreds of people there. Everyone loved Michael Myers. There was some great Michael Myers cosplay. Again, thank you so much to everyone who came up to me and let me know you watched the channel or you love my fan film. I was in the right place, obviously, having that many Halloween fans around, but it still felt so damn awesome to be in just a great event like that. Even though it was a million degrees out, everyone was having fun and I could not have been more excited to be there. So make sure you get there in South Pasadena. It's right next to the Myers house. Follow them on Instagram at Sugarman Gallery and you can get all the info there. As always, guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Shape on.